All right, so we have new release today, and um, I'm going to be coloring the pixie from the new Mushroom Pixie stamp set. And we're gonna make a card, we're gonna do all kinds of cool stuff. So, um, as I'm waiting for everybody to pop on, I'm gonna go ahead and make my card base. Um, I just use regular, I think this is 80 pound cardstock. Could be less than that, not real sure. And I use my press pop to crease it so I get nice stiff creases in my card base. Now, since I'm never super great at folding, I'm going to pull out my trimmer and I'm going to trim this down to five and a half. by four and a quarter. So I have the perfect A2 card base. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do with this card base, hi, I'm not sure who's popped on, but say hello. The other thing I'm gonna do with this card base is I'm going to have a piece of cardstock that is slightly off-white and it looks like it's already trimmed. So I usually trim this a quarter of an inch smaller. So I will trim this to four and then five and a quarter. So, I have that, okay? Hey, Carol. Then I have my piece of Sweet Sentiment cardstock. I like to layer my cards a lot, as you can notice. I have my piece of Sweet Sentiment cardstock that I'm going to be um, using my stencil on. So, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down to size as well. So, I kind of boogered both sides of it. So, I'm gonna trim this side to four. And then I'm just going to scant this side just a tad. This is four, so I'm going to make this an eighth of an inch smaller. So this will be three and seven eighths. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. So this is cut to five and a half. So I'm going to cut this to five and a quarter, which is the same size as this one. And then on this side, I'm going to cut it, cut an eighth of an inch off of that. So this would be five and an eighth. Now, theoretically, it should all stack up just perfectly. If I did my maths right. Just like that. So that's what I'm looking for for my card base. I can toss this aside now. Hi, Linda Lou. I just realized I have like so many nicknames for you. It's fantastic. Okay, so my card base is ready. I'm going to set that aside. Um, my stamp, I have used the Pixie stamp and I have stamped him in Memento Desert Sand. So I'm going to set my stamp set aside. I just did that so you guys could see it. And we're going to zoom in so we can color him. Probably right about there. It should be good. And I'm gonna grab my markers. I'm gonna put this up here in the corner so you can see what markers I'm using. Hello, my friend. I see that you already ordered. I'm so excited. Hey, Harlan. You out for one of our walks. Hooray. So um, Sandy wanted me to color this guy the same as I colored this one. And I'm gonna kind of do that. I'm gonna do it a little bit different because I don't want to exactly the same. So I'm going to color his skin a little more um, on the, the fleshy side and a little bit less purple. And I think I'm going to make his tunic green instead of brown. But I did pull both colors just in case. I've also stamped him um, in desert sand so that I can make his eyes. See on here how he has like these big black 
pupils, I'm going to be coloring his eyes in. So first things first, I'm going to wet the paper. I'm going to be using my E quadruple zero. I have to move my chair down. There we go. So I'm closer to closer to my image. So I'm just going to use this marker to wet the paper. I'm just kind of preparing it. You know how painters use primer to prime your walls before they paint them? This is kind of the same principle as that. I am using the brand new Teal Label Sweet Sentiment paper. So this is 155 pound paper. It's 256 GSM, so very tight weave on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and color his little, oh, uh, maybe I'll do his hands and feet separately. I'm not real sure yet. If it is, I can just color it again. Okay, so cool little dude. I'm gonna start with BV00 as my shadow. So I'm going to come in and shadow everywhere where I believe there would be a shadow. So I'm gonna start right here where his ear comes off of his head. I'm gonna leave a little shadow here. And down here. I know my hand is probably covering where I color but I need to choke up on the marker a whole bunch because I need to have a lot of control. So in subsequent colors, you will see I'm not gonna be covering it as much. So I'm gonna follow the artist drawn lines here to add some of these details in that are very deep, where his little wrinkles are very deep. So he's gonna look really weird for a little bit um, mainly because this is purple and so it's going to be very shocking. But I spent a lot of time looking at images online, like photography images, to sort of go into um, what I want my shadows and stuff to look like to study. And I noticed once a long time ago that a lot of those images have kind of purple shadows to them. And so that's what inspired me to make this skin tone. So I think it will be great for this little pixie dude because he is just so stinking cute. And we can make him look a little bit more effeminate if we want. We can add eyelashes and such. It's up to us. using a real light touch with this marker. Harlan, I'm still blown away by the kindness that you and Joseph showed us at the show. You guys were just so sweet and we even ate some of those snacks on the way home and it was just so great. We filled our cups. So we appreciate that. What, what thoughtful guys you are. Okay, I'm 
just kind of going around making sure I have everything I want. Gosh, he looks so weird right now. Okay. I know, I already can't wait for Sacramento too. Joseph was wondering about the coloring video you mentioned in the Pleasant class was out. Again, no pressure. It is not out yet. I haven't had time to make it, um, you know, with this release and all of that stuff. It will be, though. Okay, so I'm going to my E21. And this is a very peachy color. It's very different than the color I already used. But this will add a lot more dimension to it. Always using short brush strokes, never using just long strokes to leave the marker nib on the paper. That is a mistake that a lot of people... <laughs> I know, right? I am busy in so many ways. <laughs> and when I got home, I got even more busy because our release isn't actually here. I have the stamp sets. They came here without any packaging. And um, I still don't have the dies. They are stuck in the truck on their way here from Salt Lake City. They've had some serious snow in that direction. We've had some unseasonable snow here this year. Um, it is March and I don't know if y'all know this, but it's March. And we still have snow on the ground which is super duper odd. Now granted, it's just a skiff of snow. It's not a lot. And it is like leftover from last week. But the point is, is that it's gotten, it's stayed so cold that the snow hasn't gotten a chance to melt away. So um, that's unseasonable for here. Very odd. So, Yeah. And everybody seems to be having nice weather, except for us. So super jealous. It's also exceedingly windy here, both yesterday and today. Um, which the wind in between seasons is not exactly odd. But right now, since there's so much snow on all the mountains around us, uh, that wind is, shall we say, frigid to say the least. Yeah, I knew it was going to be a really rough Dablos. Ha ha, no pun intended. Um, I knew it was going to be quite the rough takeoff from Salt Lake for you guys, for sure. Coming over those mountains that um, that airport is so close to the mountains that you would get just a ton of turbulence coming off of them. Right, so this is the middle color in my blend. This is E00, and it's fairly close to the color of the ink, a little bit lighter. The center color in your blend is known as your true color, so think Cindy Lauper. Um, it's basically your color without any highlight or any shadow. Let's 
So I'm a lot more liberal with this color. I use a lot more of it because I want his skin to really read as this color with highlights and shadows in it. And modeling his face in a little bit, molding it in so he has these open cheeks. Those of you who regularly watch Sandy's videos will notice Sandy and I color quite differently. She has a much more artistic background than I do. I have a very psychological background to my coloring. And so we approach things from a di very different direction, but we both end up with something awesome. So I always say there's no Copic police. You can color how you like to color. We will give you tips and tricks, but learn all you can from whoever you can and then use all of those things that you like or dislike to create your own way of coloring. And that's how you get like your own style. As you find things that work for you. Now, since he's grinning so large, I'm gonna give him some rosy cheeks. I like to use R20 to do that. So we're going to color in these cheeks and we're going to make them quite rosy with a lot of pink. Don't worry, I'm going to uh, blend that out some. I now have my E quadruple zero. And then I'm going to come to the edges of this pink and I'm going to brush them inwards to make them a little bit softer. I'm just using this marker in the extreme highlights. Again, brushing those in. Oh, look at those cute little rosy cheeks he has. I love it. Now he looks weird because he has no eyes. But so adorable. So I'm going to come back down here, wet this paper again, just because it's been so long. And we're going to color his feet and his hands at the same time. Notice even when I'm filling this in, I'm still using those short brush strokes because this is a paintbrush and this is a marker. Really two tools in one. So I'm going to go back to my BB00 for my shadow colors. Hopefully it helps you guys to have those sitting there. I'm going to come in where his wrist is. We're going to come in under his shirt here, his tunic. Where his thumb and finger are in between his fingers. Just like that. Same thing on this side, next to his body, where his thumb and finger are. My gosh, this little dude is just so cute. And he has so much potential too. There's so many cute things you could do with him. I think anyways. So I'm gonna come under his tunic onto his feet. His big old feet crack me up. I'm 
the bottom of his feet and between his toes. I have no idea where Sandy got the idea for these big old feet, but they make me laugh. I told her to make it weird and she listened. <laughs> okay, so now to our E2 one. Again, going over that purple. Tinting it more this peachy color. Elongating those shadows. Adding a tiny bit more detail. And I mean tiny, because woo, this is tiny. I'm pretty sure I need a new nib on this E2 one. Not gonna lie. My nib is very blunt right now. Worn, worn the nib down on this one a lot, but I use this color so much. There we go. Hi, Melanie. I didn't see you pop on. You guys are being so quiet out there. Are you guys enjoying this release? Are you loving all the cool stuff? We're going to use the stencil today, too. On this card. Because I haven't really gotten to play with this stencil yet, so I really want to. Oh, great. Because you want to see me use the stencil? You want to see how it works? Okay, and then my last marker, my E quadruple zero. I'm just gonna add those little highlights to the top of his little chubby hands and to the top of his little footsies here. There we go. All right, and if you notice, this is not coloring through to the back, even despite how much ink I'm putting in there, it is blank on the back which is so stinking cool. Um, there will be other videos on what to do with that, but just so you know, that's something that we have been working towards. I'm gonna get a drink of water. All right, now we have our little dude here, and I think that I'm gonna go ahead and color his wings next. 
So I'm going to start with my BV triple zero. You'll see I swatched these up here um, just so I could see what order I wanted them to go in. And I'm gonna start by outlining around his face. And then I'm better at doing brush strokes towards myself. So I'm gonna pull some brush strokes out in this direction, which sets me up to line this side. Now, I chose these colors in an order that will make them blend into one another. So the BV has a violet in it, so the RV also has a violet in it. So these two will blend fairly well together. These are also my darkest colors. And so I want them up closer to his body because his body would leave more of a shadow onto these darker colors. And I'm trying to make his wings kind of be a little bit of an ombre. So see how those mix together really well. Then I have my YOO. And the reason I used this one next to the pink is because yellow and pink make orange. So this will go from a pink to an orange to a yellow. So um, also we're going into the highlight of his wing. And the highlight is going to be the lightest part. So this is a lighter color. So I'm just making sure to go back into that pink. To create that kind of rainbow ombre effect. I don't want to go too far into the purple because yellow and purple make brown. <laughs> So I definitely don't want that. Okay, then I have G20. This is, it's called Wax White, but it definitely has a green tone to it. It is a G, it's part of the G family. So again, we're going to come up this direction. I'm going to cover back into that yellow just a little bit. And I might actually soften the edge of this just a tad with that yellow. Perfect. Okay, then I have my BG10. And since this has a green in it, it's gonna mix well with the other greens. Also, this is again into a little bit of a darker color. And so I always feel like the wingtips are a tiny bit darker because they all come up together. And I'm gonna run this over that green just a little bit. And 
And so I have some really cool kind of ombre looking, almost rainbowish sort of wings. We're going to add some glitter to them at the end. Are you guys liking this so far? You guys aren't very, aren't commenty today, so you must be mesmerized watching. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay. So I'm going to switch here. And would you guys like his tunic to be like an olive green or brown like this guy? <laughs> You're walking. Oh, thanks, Carol. I, I am glad that helps. Do you guys want olive green or do you want brown? You want brown? Cheryl says brown, so he'll have green eyes. Hee <laughs> hee. Okay, so this brown is going to be a little bit more warm. I used um, the 40s on this one, and I'm going to use some of the 20s and 50s and 30s on this one. So it's definitely going to have a little more warmness to it. Um, thanks, Linda. Okay, so I'm going to start with E27. And I'm going to go in here where I know the shadows would be. So obviously where the cowl part of his tunic is on his neck and the creases in that. I'm gonna flip him around so I can go to this side. Same thing on this side. Um, I teach classes. Carol, if you're interested, didn't you say you were from Sacramento? I will be at the Sacramento show teaching classes, and I'm hoping that Sandy will have a class there too. Um, but I teach coloring classes, and in the class you will get to keep all the markers that you use. So that's always a bonus. We're going to trace around his hands because his hands would cast a shadow onto his little tunic. So you can go to the Stampin' Scrapbook Expo.com. I don't even know what it is. I think it's scrapbookexpo.com. Oh, you were in the Mesquite class. That's right. I'll be teaching a different class in Mesquite. Oh, wait, are we going to Mesquite? No, we're not. Dang it. Um, but yeah, you did take the class from this, this year. So awesome. Did you get pink markers? That's the video that, um, Joseph and Harlan were asking about at the beginning of this live is the video that I'm making that is a review of that class. So if you need the video, um, I will have it someday. <laughs> and no, I didn't say Sunday. That's tomorrow. I won't have the video tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so down the front of his little tunic here. That looks like about all the shadows. What do you guys think? I kind of want to thicken this shadow up a little bit. Show a little more depth here. So I'm going to do that. It looks really weird right now, but it'll be good in the end. All right. Yeah, so if you want to take the class again in Irving Carroll... I will have green markers for everyone. And you will get all sketch markers like this. I 
I have several people who are like, I want to take it again. So I'm just adding this color in to the shadows, creating dimension here, elongating those shadows out. Yeah, we do all the Texas shows. Um, we are going to do a, um, there's one in Denton. A GASC, I believe. And then we're going to be doing one in Houston and one in Irving. So, yes, we will be in Texas a lot this year. Last year seemed like our Florida year. We were in Florida a lot last year. So, this year is our Texas year. Little birdie also told me we're gonna be maybe doing coloring at the chateau again. So that's the real way, right? So true, Harlan. It's a way to jump in the deep end. Go to one of the retreats. So we're gonna do coloring at the chateau again. So you guys will hear stuff about it coming up. So stay tuned. And that's in Texas as well. The retreats are just so much fun. Okay, so now we have E23. Yikes. Dropping my lids. And again, this is the true color. So I'm going to use a little bit more of it than I did of the other colors. I'm also going to use it to kind of overlap the other colors some so that I can blend these out together and make them look similar. Seamless. giving him a little belly because he just seems like a kind of guy that would have a little belly don't you think okay notice I turn my paper a lot it's always really important to make sure that you're turning your paper to accommodate where your wrist is the most comfortable. Because if your wrist isn't comfortable, then you're not gonna get good brush strokes. And you want to be able to have the freedom to get those brush strokes where you want them. And it's really hard to do if you're trying to be a contortionist at the same time. So just turn your paper. Makes life so much easier. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to E55 and I switched um, gray levels in this because I want this to be a little bit more like worn. And if I were to use all 20s, it would look kind of chocolatey as opposed to like a tunic that this dude has been wearing for a long time. So that is why I switched colors. So it's just going to take a little extra second of blending, overlapping to get these two colors to look like they mesh well. And that's okay. We're good with that. All right. 
And then E31, this is kind of a dull color too because it doesn't have a lot of pigment in it. So I'm going to use this as my highlight. But it's also going to make things a little bit dull. And again, that's what I'm going for. I want this to look like it's worn. This is not a brand new tunic, this is his favorite tunic. Oh, look at that. I'm also gonna use this light color for his eyebrows. Because I don't want them to be like, whoa, in your face. But I do want him to have his little eyebrows here. So this marker is going to pull a double duty. See? Perfect little touch. All right. Now, this RVOO that I used in his wings, I'm going to put a little bit of it by his mouth just to make it a little bit more pink. I don't know why I wanted to do that, but I did, so there we go. All right. Now we're going to do his eyes. So I'm going to start with my magic marker. And this is my G triple zero and I'm just gonna outline the artist drawn lines and fill them in now eyes are very um, trust the process kind of things okay so just trust me on this <laughs> it's gonna look weird it's gonna be odd it's okay so I'm gonna start with my G Sorry, my YG99. And I'm going to start where the pupil would be in the center and make little brush strokes out. They don't all have to connect. And you don't want them to be the same length. You want them all to be a little bit different. See, I told you that looks super duper weird, right? This is like not what we're going for, yeah? <laughs> okay, then I'm going to use this YG95. And I'm going to go from the outside in. Side towards the center. Okay. I have this E55 already out here. So I'm going to kind of draw an outline around his eyes and then add. A little going towards the center. This sort of creates a barrier for you. Okay. Then I have my Y double zero. And in the center, I'm just going to kind of oversaturate and create a circle. Wipe that off. And then I'm going to go back to my green. Okay. 
Now, usually when I do this, I wash them out too much. So I have to go back in. And I'm gonna go in with my YG97. You could use, go back to that 99. I just wanna add a little bit more detail to these because I washed it out some. Okay. Now they won't look right until I put um, pupils and stuff in there, so give me just a second. So I have a multi-liner here. This is 0.5, it's fairly large, but that's because I want to just add a little pupil. Like that. And then I'm gonna grab my white gel pen. And look at how cute that is. So awesome. So like I said before, I was gonna add some glitter to his wings. So I have a, this is one of the jelly rolls. And I'm literally just going to trace the artist drawn lines with this to make them glittery. And the thing about gel pens that a lot of people don't get is that gel has volume. So um, when you grab a pen in your hand, your brain automatically wants to use it to write with because that's what you've been training it to do your whole life. But gel, since it has volume and is not like ink, it sits on top of the paper. And so the harder you push with your gel pen, the less it sits on top of the paper and so you'll get like a line and then a channel in the middle and then another line that's because you're pushing too hard and you're pushing the gel out of the way so go really light almost hover above the paper and that's what will give you these nice bold strong lines like i'm getting here And that's true with any gel pen, whether it's colored ink or glitter or white. If it's gel, it has volume to it. And so you wanna make sure that you're not pushing too hard. Also the delivery system of a gel pen is this is like a little funnel with a ball in it. And so if you're pushing too hard, you run the risk of denting that little ball so it no longer rolls freely in that little funnel. And so if your gel pen stops working, know that like I used, you saw me use my finger on this one to sort of get that ball lubricated so that it can roll around in there and the gel can come out from around it. So look at that cute little dude and his glittery wings, okay. So now, those are not the right ones. We're gonna fussy cut him. So I'm gonna zoom out. Hello. So I'm gonna start off by just cutting roughly around him, okay? Now, I generally like to start cutting in the most difficult places because I still have more paper to hold on to. So I'm gonna cut around his ear. I'm 
trying not to get my finger in the gel just in case it's not quite dry yet. Do you guys have any questions or anything so far? We're gonna use that stencil here in a minute. You're gonna love it. You guys just watching me fussy cut? He's so stinking cute. I know I love this little dude too, Cheryl. He's adorable. I feel like I want to call him like Norbert or something like that. <laughs> There we go. Now again, if you guys want to see even all the ink I put in his eyes and everything, there's no bleeding through. Super duper cool. Okay, so let me put my markers aside because we're about to fill the desk. All right, so I think I'm gonna have him go this way got something on his face. Oh, they were talking about making him into Baby Yoda. So if you colored his skin green and you covered his wings up, he kind of looks like the Baby Yoda. Okay, so actually, yeah, I want him to go this way. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is find my yellow tape. Where did I put my yellow? Oh, it's under my cards. That's why I can't see it. And I'm going to tape this. To the desk. Bad Sandy. <laughs> well, hi, Sharon. All right. So there's that. Then I'm going to take my jig and I'm going to center it how I want to. I'm actually not going to use those. I'm just going to tape this down as well. Okay. So I'm going to center my jig. I'm 
to go that way. There we go. And I'm going to tape it down. I colored him. He's so cute. Okay, so then I'm going to, I think I'm going to alternate patterns. So I simply just line this up in my jig. It fits perfectly. It was cut from the jig, so, you know. And then I have these little magnets, so I'm just going to magnet it down. Am I going to over magnet it? Yep, you bet. So I'm going to create these on to here. Okay. And I'm going to do, I want this to be like really light and fun and fluffy and cute. So I'm going to start, oh, I want to use my oxides. I'm going to start with spun sugar. And then I'm going to go to... Let's see, what do I want? I want something like dried marigold. And then I want scattered straw. And then shabby shutters. And then use caution not to color over where the jig and rotating meet up yes thank you for that uh green so blue i want speckled egg and then my purple is going to be shaded lilac okay i have my handy dandy so one two three four five six yep okay and I have my handy dandy holder. I don't know why I put them all in there, but hey, you know, that's me. So we're going to start with shaded lilac. What Sandy's talking about is right here where the jig and the paper overlap. Mine happens to be off of my paper right now, so it's not too big of a deal. Now I'm going to use two different designs and I'm going to alternate them. Yes, so like right here where this overlaps. If you're so inclined, you could put like a piece of tape. Ooh, you know what would be even better is a post-it note. To mask this part so that it does not print on my paper. Shabby Shutters is next. And I'm going back to this design. And I just realized I don't want to make it purple. So I'm going to wipe it off. I don't care if there's a little bit on there, but. Okay. Okay. 
Oh my gosh, you guys, this is really fun. <laughs> Scattered straw. Nope, I grabbed mustard seed. Wild honey. Squeeze lemonade. Blossoms amber. Dried marigold. I'm going to need that one. Where is my scattered straw? Here it is. I found it. Okay. So back to this one. I really like this. This is so cool. Are you guys liking this? Flowers, not showers. Autocorrect is whack. Well, I think we have some spring showers worthy of adding to the Facebook album. I love that album. It's so pretty. And I'm going to use my post-it note again because this part is on the paper. I now have dried marigold. Oops, I slid it under the jig. Ah, it's so cute. I just realized I didn't grab enough colors, but that's all right. We'll improvise. Oops. Guess I better put it in the right place, huh? It's probably where I'll put the little dude. Fun sugar. Oh, that's salt water taffy. This must be sponge sugar. Oh, awesome new release. Stencil is so cool. Agreed. The more you use it, the faster you can do it. Yeah. This is my very first time of using it, so I'm not very fast at doing it. But... I'm also super meticulous, so I doubt if I will be ever very fast at doing it. And I just totally scooched it out of the way, so let me line it back up. Probably be easier to line up if I didn't have those on it. There we go. That's what you get for not putting all your magnets on. And it's okay, because I'm going to spritz this with water anyway, so I'm not super upset about if it's not quite perfect. Which, it came out pretty perfect, so I'm not too concerned. Okay, so pink, and then that one. Bloop. So I'm gonna grab 
a very pale brown. I'm going to use frayed burlap. Maybe. Beautiful. And then I'm going to grab my new gray wherever I put it. Where did I put it? It's this one. Oh no. It's this one. Lost Shadow. And I don't even have a brush for it yet. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so cool. I'm so happy with it. And it's so much fun. Put washi on the long edges instead of the corners. It holds it so much better. Oh, okay. Cool. Good to know. Pro tip. Ah, I love it. So pretty. Okay. So now I'm going to pull up the jig because I don't need that anymore. And I'm going to pull up the stencil, or I mean the paper. Just be careful when peeling your tape so that you don't injure your paper. Okay. Now, what I like to do after all of that just put that aside. I'm going to have a hard time figuring out where all these go. I'm going to take my vintage photo. Ah, there it is. Back of the coloring paper to hold it still. Okay. I'm going to take my vintage photo. I'm just going to lightly touch it on the ink pad and I'm going to come around the edges of this. Super cute. Okay. That away. I have a ton of brushes out. <laughs> and it is easier to wipe the oxides off your desk if you spritz it with water. Ooh, don't mind the squeaky. There we go. Now, I have these cool little, these are our laser cut sentiments. And I just want it to simply say happy birthday. I'm not sure which one I want to use yet though, because it's in different fonts. So I'm going to pull them all out and see which one I like the most. That is obviously not for that one. Probably more like this. 
There we go. So there's option number one. Option number two. And option number three. And you guys can tell me which one you like best. Which would you like best? Carol says one. I'm kind of with you, Carol. I think I like that one too. Anybody else have an opinion? Linda says two. Sandy says she likes them all, which is so unhelpful. Cheryl says two. Dale likes two. Oh my gosh, that's three votes for number two. Guess that's it. Haha, <laughs> three votes for number two. I knew you were going to laugh at that, Dale. All right, so I'm going to take these off of here, and I'm going to use my vintage photo and just kind of hit the edges of these. You can color them with your Copics, you can color them with inks, you can, however you want to do it. But I like to just have them a little bit, a little tiny bit of color on them. Carol, did you see that? We were outvoted. I was outvoted on my own live. Just make sure that you're doing a really light touch with the brush and holding on to the word with your fingers or you'll bend them. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my Barely Art glue, which all of my glue things are broken. This one's not. I'm also going to grab a pair of tweezers and then drop my word promptly after that. <laughs> right, Carol? I'm Carol. Sad. Sad. That's okay. They're all going to be cute. Okay. Now, this glue dries invisible, but I still like to kind of clean it up just a little bit. So, again, that's the OCD in me wanting to do that. So now, So cute. If you guys don't have these laser cut words, I'm telling you, you need them. We have ones that are like congratulatory ones. We have sympathy ones. They are just so cool and they add such a fun element. And again, like I said, I'm super fussy. You don't have to do this part. It'll dry and it'll all be fine. I'm gonna use my little press pop to make sure those are on there. There we go. Okay. Funsies. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I got this cool spray from our anthology. And this is ice. And so it's just a glitter. It's literally just shimmer. And so I'm going to shake it up really well. I'm going to put a tissue down for overspray. Yes, you're so welcome. Okay, and then 
because this is a water base, it will interact with the um, oxide inks. So be careful not to spray too much. And this will add a really subtle shimmer to your card. It's kind of like the fix for, remember the old Sweet Sentiment paper that had the fun shimmer in it? This is kind of the fix for that. It adds just that little amount of shimmer. I don't know if it catches it. Yes, this is the one I got you. And then, I mean, while I'm at it, I may as well make this shimmer too. You can probably see it a little bit better on that black cardstock. Okay, so now that we have all that ready, where did I put, oh there it is, my card base. So, I'm gonna start by gluing this to this. Now you notice how the paper warped as soon as I sprayed it. That's because when you get any liquid into or onto the paper surface, it's going to absorb into the paper fibers. And those paper fibers are going to expand because they're now wet. And so that is what makes your paper warp. So since it's dry on the opposite side of the paper, it will not warp in that direction. So FYI, dry your paper. <laughs> There we go. Okay, I want the yellow at the top. I know on the screen this seems like a ton of glue, um, but it's actually really not. I had to make sure my card opened the right direction. Now I'm gonna draw your attention to, remember when I was pulling the tape off of the paper and I said, be careful not to pull the tape too hard because you will injure your paper. So this is what happens when you injure your paper and then you put ink over it, it makes it really noticeable. I mean, to me, this is like a shabby card, shabby chic card, so it doesn't really bug me that it's on there. But if it bugs you, um, by all means, make sure that you're very careful when you're pulling that tape off. Sign your artwork always. All right. So now I have to decide. I think I want the little dude like this. Oh my gosh, it looks like he has a little halo just like that. And so we're going to pop Got to get the sweet pops out. And with Sweet Pops, you can cut them to be whatever size you want. So I'm going to cut this one to go right here. So there's support behind that letter. Same with this one. They're just so handy. And just because it's in my hand, I'm going to put this one there. <laughs> it doesn't need it. It's completely frivolous, but hey, why not? How come you never um, offered to take me to the Arboretum? 
Roots. Perfect. Now this guy's a hankering for barbecue. I always have a hankering for barbecue. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I make you work and then I leave. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to pull it along his wings and then his ear, I'm going to curve this way and his wings, I'm going to curve that way. His wings are going to go back and his ear is going to come forward. And it just gives a little bit of extra dimension to him. And then the words, since I popped them up once, I'm going to pop him up twice. I would put him on a wobble, but I'm all out of wobbles. I used my last one for release. So I need to get another pack. I mean, we have them in stock and everything. I just, you know. And blue bonnets will be in bloom, right? Sandy, you take lots of allergy pills before you go, okay? Okay, so I have that. And then, of course, dots. Y'all know I can't do anything without dots. Can't even pretend. I kind of like these colors with it. Just the first one I pulled out. Those are all super bright. Yep, I don't want those colors. I want this one. So the, the matte dots, for some reason, very unbeknownst to me, um, do not stick super duper well. So, FYI, um, just put a little spot of glue under them, which I do for 90% of my dots anyways. But, just thought you might want to know. Way they call it that period of the Arboretum. Do they have a corpse flower? <laughs> She's gonna be like, no. Tree houses. Oh my gosh. You guys are making me super jelly, man. Oh, did you see that? It went flying. <laughs> I 
That one really went flying. You'd think I've never worked with these before. All right, you guys. There it is. There is our cute, adorable. Yeah, you gotta start using dots. They're so fun. And they just add so much to your card. They really, really do. So there is our adorable little pixie. Cleaning up all my spots so I can show you. How cute is that? I used our brand new rotating stencer, stencil, our brand new um, pixie, mushroom pixie. These are our laser cut sentiments. And then of course our dots. And I used our cardstock to color. It's so fun. So thank you guys for joining me today. I really had fun making this little guy. He's so stinking cute. Um, I will put this video over on our YouTube so you can watch the replay there if you want. And I will take a photo of this little guy. The shimmer on this, like, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's just so subtle and it's so pretty. I love it. It adds exactly that shimmer like used to be on our old paper. And it, that makes me happy. So anyways, thank you guys for joining me and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Linda. I will see you tomorrow. Um, look for all of our cool new release stuff that the design team is posting. They knocked it out of the park. And um, Sandy has, Sandy made a TikTok video. I'm so proud of her. Um, I saw her post it earlier, so that's wicked cool. And I made a TikTok video and posted it. Um, but for those of you who don't have TikTok, we are putting them over onto our Facebook. So never fear. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful Saturday and um, <laughs> subtle and beautiful. <laughs> Just you make me giggle. Um, shocking, I know. Um, so anyways, I'll see you tomorrow at the same time, 2 o'clock. Have a wonderful day and go shop the, go shop the sale. Go shop the uh, new release while it's on sale. All that good stuff. Toodles.